In this video, I'm going to give you my top five built-in Blender add-ons. These add-ons can help improve your workflow, so let's get to it. First of all, you have to enable them, so you have to go to Edit, Preferences, and then we go to Add-ons. And number one is Rigify, so we're going to just go to the little search guy and search for Rigify. And hit the check mark and save preferences. And we'll just put it off to the side. Now I have my masterpiece of a human model. And I can go to Shift A, go to Armature, and you'll see a few new settings for human, which is your standard human, with a face. Or you could go with a more basic ones, such as the basic human. You got animals like bird, cat, horse, shark, and wolf. And then you also have the basic quadruped for your basic four-legged animals. So I'm going to use basic human for this example, which basically just doesn't have a face or fingers. And all of that, I mean wireframe, I can go and select my mesh and then shift select my armature and hit control P for parent. And then I can parent the mesh to my armature with automatic weights if I want just the automatic ones. And then I can go into my armature and hit control tab to go into pose mode. And then as you can see, I can now rotate here with this automatically created rig so that I don't have to worry about rigging it myself. And of course, in edit mode, you might have to move some of the bones around to make sure that it fits your mesh, but that's not a big problem. Now I can also go to this little stick man for your armature settings and you can hit generate rig. And after a couple of seconds, you'll have a rig generated to help make it simpler. And then I'll have your inverse kinematic set up so that you can work with it a little easier. Maybe move the hand here automatically or the foot. Number two is loop tools. So just search for loop tools and hit a check mark and save preferences. Now what loop tools does is it gives you a bunch of extra functions in edit mode to modify your loops. So I can go and add a cube, for example, maybe go ahead and add some edge loops with control R. And maybe I'll grab this loop here with alt left click. And then I can right click and we got our loop tool settings and I could hit circle. And now I made it into a circle. We got other ones. So let's say I grab these, hit I, and I want to make a hole going through the center here. I could go and use the bridge. And you'll see that it has a center, but it still has the faces or I could leave them on. Then it's got segments so that it can add more segments to the bridge. And other settings like this linear. So I say straight with more loops, with more segments or cubic where it rounds out. Got strength and we got twist, which will twist it. Got other ones like flatten, which will flatten it out based off of your viewing angle. And it has a bunch of other useful tools for your loops. Number three is Node Wrangler. So search for Node Wrangler, turn it on, save. Now we can say add a material and go into our shading tab. Now what Node Wrangler does is obviously it helps to make your nodes easier to work with. It's got a bunch of helpful things, for example, if I hit Shift W to open up the Node Wrangler window, we got all kinds of tools like the Merge, and you can use Mix, Add. We got all of the overlays and math, and all the ways to merge our two nodes together. It has principles set up, which can allow us to take a bunch of textures from our folder with names such as like base color and metallic, roughness, 
and I'll try to automatically decide where in our principled BSDF shader to plug in each of our textures. It's got delete unused nodes, line nodes, reload images, all kinds of useful tools to help you with your node wrangling needs. Another one, for instance, is that I can go and control shift left click. It'll go and automatically plug in whatever one of our nodes is into this viewer guy so that we can view it to fix problems in our node system. Say maybe if one of the nodes itself is the one that's causing a problem and not giving the output we expect, we can just quickly do that. And if I control shift left, click on here, it goes back. If I had two of the same type of node, I can go and do a alt right drag and it will automatically mix them. Number four is our scatter objects add-on. Just enable it and save preferences. And I went into further depth in a previous video up there in the corner. But as a brief breakdown, I could add, say, a plane and select this, shift select this, and hit F3 to search for scatter objects and now I can draw a line and it'll scatter these cylinder shapes onto my plane. It's got settings up here for density, radius, scale, the randomness of the scale, the rotation randomness, the offset, and the random seed. And if I hit enter, it'll automatically place them along my line that I drew. So if this looks useful to you, Go into my previous video for more information on that. And number five, we're going to go with our adding curve and mesh add-ons. So there's a few here, but I feel like they all deserve a place. So I can go into the categories from all to add curve. And we got useful ones here, like add extra curve objects, which will add things like rectangle ones and, and spirals and all that kind of useful curves. Ivy generation, which allows you to create ivy on your meshes. We've got sapling tree gen, which lets you create your. We got sapling tree gen, which lets you create your trees. And then under add mesh, we've got a lot of useful ones like at landscape, which helps you to make landscapes. We got archy mesh and archy pack, which are for architecture. We got blender kit asset library which lets you automatically go from the Blender Kit asset library and add them from their online library. We got Bolt Factory, which gives you bolts, nuts, and similar things. We got Discombobulator, which allows you to create greeblies on your meshes. So say you had like a Star Wars or other kind of sci-fi style where you got all these little engine-y greeblies. You can use this to help place them real quickly. We got add mesh extra objects, which has a bunch of extra objects of different types like teapots and math based ones and all kinds of stuff. And we got geodesic domes too, which creates geodesic dome type objects. This was Mr. TriPi. And if you liked this video, please like subscribe and watch some of my other videos to help my channel grow. Thank you.